Hi everyone, welcome back to the Frequently Asked Questions video series about aquaponics, the geodesic dome, rocket mass heaters, and all kinds of other topics. Before I get started, just a couple quick notes. The captions that you see around here, I usually put links in them to my other videos so that you can reference things when I mention them. Also, we'll be having an open house here April 19th through the 21st which is part of the Aquaponic Association's Tour to Tanks promotion, where people across the United States are opening their homes and businesses so people can see various aquaponic setups. So I hope I see you here or hear about you going to one of my fellow aquaponic growers open houses. Okay, so let's get started. This first question is a response to the first frequently asked questions video about the cost of building the geodesic dome greenhouse. As you may recall, I said it cost around $45,000 to build this, which a few of you thought that was very high. So I just wanted to address that uh, quickly, and that's going to be covered in our first question here. Maybe this is a silly question, but can you please explain why you went with the geodesic dome design instead of just a normal rectangular building? With $45,000 to build that, wouldn't it be cheaper with a less complicated shape? You need to remember that this isn't just a small kit greenhouse. This is a full-scale building. I had to get building permits, all the proper plans and whatnot for this. So it's not just a little hobby greenhouse that costs a few hundred dollars and it's only a couple hundred square feet. Uh, this is an 1,100 square foot building. So I broke down some of the costs for the various components of the greenhouse and we'll just read these off to you. Plans and permits, $300. The site work, which was the excavation for digging the foundation holes, stumping, pulling rocks, was $3,500. Footings and foundation, $3,500. And that's no labor in that. That's just the raw materials for me to do the work myself. Sand and gravel, $1,000. Cedar for the dome struts, $2,100. Polycarbonate, $3,000. Polyurethane tape for joints, $1,000. Miscellaneous hardware, $750. Vent openers, $600. Brick floor, $2,000. Doors, $600. Lumber for the shed area, $6,000. And again, that's one of the larger expenses that I really wasn't anticipating when I first built the building. Roofing materials, $2,000. Cedar shingles for the siding, $2,500. Insulation, $4,000. Again, this is a larger expense because most of the insulation is the foam insulation, which does cost more than uh, standard batting. Wood milling, $500. Solar setup, $7,500. Again, another large expense that probably wasn't necessary, but I did want to keep this building running off-grid as much as possible. And the aquaponic system, $2,500. So that totals to be $43,350. And there's a few other miscellaneous costs that were thrown in there too, which I don't remember what they were. So that's how it breaks down with the cost of this. So you can see it adds up pretty quickly. It doesn't take much when you start doing these larger buildings. And I think if you did build a standard greenhouse, the polycarbonate, galvanized steel structure or aluminum, it's gonna add up pretty quickly. You still have to put it on a foundation, do site work and whatnot. So, Overall, it's probably going to be about the same cost. Moving on to question number two. How do you control algae from growing throughout the system? Well, it's a very simple rule. Keep your water out of the sun. All the grow beds, you need to make sure that the water levels stay below the stone, usually an inch to two inches below the top of the stone. Any raft systems that you might have, make sure they're always covered in rafts. If you don't have rafts in certain areas, Try to cover that area with a floating weed, which can also be used for helping to feed the fish. And also extremely important, make sure your fish tank stays out of the sun, or at least the sides are covered with a material that the sun can't get through. My tank is on the northern side of the dome. It is exposed a little bit of sun, so it does get some algae growth along the sides, but the fish mostly pick that off. There's no algae floating within the tank. Number three. Do you use compost on the inside of the dome to help keep it warm? I get asked this question a lot about keeping the greenhouse heated because people see how much I spend on pellets. I am not a fan at all of putting compost inside the building. 
first of all, you need a lot of compost, and the aquaponics system here really doesn't generate a whole lot. So that means I would have to truck in compost from other areas. And just by doing that, I'd have to open up the doors, let the heat out, and you're storing compost in the building where I'd rather utilize that space for growing the plants. Plus, having compost inside of a building, it will help promote fungus, mold, other bacteria. It can bring in pests, rodents, and other creepy crawly things that I just don't want inside the building. So my general rule of thumb is no compost in the building. Get it out as quickly as possible. Number four, what seeds do you start right in the grow medium and what do you start in soil? When do you transplant to grow beds? A lot of my seeds I just sprinkle right into the grow beds. Anything that are in the rafts I will put right into the net pots. I don't use any plugs so with the lettuce I'll just drop a couple seeds right into each net pot and let it grow. If I have two seeds come up I'll thin it out a little bit. Uh, but for the most part everything is grown right in place. I do have some seeds that I will grow in the house uh, to get started, mainly because it's a little bit warmer. So plants like radish, lettuce, carrots, things like that, I just start right in the grow beds. I don't need to bother transplanting them. The lettuce starts right in the rafts. No bother to transplant those either. I will start them in a more concentrated area and then move them into a more spread out raft once they start getting a little bit larger. Number five, I notice you grow mainly Anglo-Saxon fruits and vegetables. Are you planting some exotic fruit plants, even as a trial? Well, I do have my pineapple plant, so I do classify that as exotic, at least for me. Um, I'm usually a fairly boring vegetable eater. Again, tomatoes and lettuce, cucumbers, those are my favorites, and I don't deviate much off of that. So I don't grow much else. A few herbs and spices here and there, too. Other than that, it's pretty boring. So that's about it for today. I'd like to thank you for watching once again. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below or send me an email at faq.bigelowbrook.com. And don't forget about our farm tour coming up April 19th through the 21st. And there will be information about that in the links below at bigelowbrook.com slash tours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. The perp. <coughs> So I wanted to read up, uh, for those that, of you that aren't aware, <laughs> number five, I notice you grow mainly Anglo-Saxon fruits and vegetables. Are you planting some exotic fruit? <clears throat> number five, I notice you grow mainly Anglo, number five, I notice you grow mainly Anglo, number five. I notice you grow mainly...